संडेज क्लैश भगवदगीता क्लैश ओ पार्थाय प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायण स्वयं व्यासेन ग्रथिता पुराण मुनिना मध्ये महाभारत अद्वैत अमृत वर्षिने भगवती मष्टादशाध्याय ने आम तवाम अनुसंधा में भगवत गीते भगवेशिनी <coughs> नमो अस्तु ते व्यास विशाल बुद्धे फुल अरविंद आयत पत्र नेत्र येन तव्या भारत तैल पूर्ण प्रज्वलित ज्ञान में प्रदीपा प्रपन्न पारी जाताए तोत्र वेत्र एक पान है ज्ञान मुद्रा ए कृष्णा ए गीता अमृत हुए नमः सर्वोपनिषदो गावो दोगदा गोपाल नंदना पार्थो वत्सा सुधीर भोगता दुग्धम गीता अमृतम महत वसुदेव वसुतम देवम कंस चा नूर मर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्णम वंदे जगत गुरुम भीष्म द्रोण तटा जयद्रथ जला गांधार नीलोत्पला शल्य ग्रावती कृपेन वाहने करने नुबे लाखुला अशवथाम विकर्ण घोर मकरा दुर्योधन अवर्तने सोती ना खलु पांडवई रनदी के वर्तका केशवा पारा शरे वत्सरो जमलम गीता अर्थ गंधोटकम नाना ख्यानक केसरम हरि कथा संबोधन अबोधितम लोके सज्जन शट पदे रह रहे पे पिए मानम मुदा भूयाद भारत पंकजम कलिमल पद्वंसी न श्रेयसे मुकम करोति वाचालम पंगुम लंग्यते गिरन यकृपातम वंदे परमानंद माधव यम ब्रह्म वरुण इंद्र रुद्र मरुता सुनवंती दिव्य स्तवे वेदे सांग पद क्रम उपनिषदे गायन्ति यम साम गा ज्ञान वस्ते तद्गतेन मनसा पश्यन्ति यम योगिनो यस्यन्त न विदु सुर असुर गना देवाय तस्मै नमः so we are on chapter 18 of bhagavad gita and we have finished the first portion where the main talk was the conversation between lord krishna and arjuna about the tyag and the sanyas because arjuna wanted to know clearly definitively the difference between tyag and sanyas so we've been learning about that and then last couple of verses Lord Krishna explained how to become a karma sanyasi also while doing the action, remembering the factors which are involved in the success or the failure of the action. If you remember that clearly, you can become a karma sanyasi too. Okay, who is doing it? What is really happening? What is the force behind it? So before we move to the next segment. where lord krishna is further explaining the factors that induce the action and the basis of the actions the constituents of the actions so he is going to elaborate that also so i would request urmil ji she has written a great book we all know that in poetry verse by verse so she'll be reciting these first 17 verses from her book so uh, jyoti if you can unmute purnil ji so after that i will start with verse number 18 today thank you purnil ji i'm new to yourself sorry am i unmuted yes yes i can hear you now uh good morning everyone uh we thought we recapitulate the first 17 verses and then uh, move on so uh, after listening to harji's uh, class there are a couple of words that are changed from the book which i'm reading today but in essence it's all the same uh, uh, moksha sanyas yog from bhagavad gita chapter 18 the it's a path of liberation through renunciation Arjuna asks Lord Krishna and that is the last question question number 16 there are 16 questions that Arjuna asked in this uh, book o oh, mighty arm krishna tyag and sanyas are both described as renunciation of action 
oh lord of the senses, I want to know the nature of tyag and sannyas and their distinction. Lord Krishna replied, as per the sages, tyag means to work for sure, but abandon the fruits of action done dutifully. Sannyas is renunciation a step higher where the desire prompted actions are absent entirely. Some learned men suggest giving up even the essential duties as they too can be faulty. Other sages assert that never abandon valuable acts like sacrifice, charity, and austerity. O oh Arjuna, listen to my final thoughts on Tyag, the sacrifice of bondage to the fruits of all work. There are three kinds of renunciation that are affirmed to cognize the variance do not shirk. The acts of sacrifice, austerity, charity are your duties that I say you should never abandon. These three acts are purifiers that boost spiritual growth, even of people with much wisdom. These fundamental activities must be done without attachment to actions or compensation. O oh Arjuna, this is my sovereign command. Work without sense of ego and expect no restitution. Now, Lord Krishna continues to explain three types of renunciation, and they are tamasic, rajasic, and sattvic. Tamasic sacrifice is avoiding one's essential duties like charity, austerity, and penance. Giving up even one's uh, obligatory word is deluded renunciation in the mode of ignorance. Rajasic sacrifice is resisting one's obligatory duties because they give pain to the body. Such renunciation brings no internal growth, is in the mode of passion and rather ungodly. Sattvic sacrifice is performing one's obligatory duties happily and with a sense of allegiance. Oh Arjuna, dedicating all actions to God is true renunciation and it is in the mode of goodness. Now who is a true renunciate? A tyagi who elevates to the level of a sannyasi. A tyagi neither avoids unpleasant work nor clings to work for which he has infatuation. Blessed with qualities of divine nature, he abandons the desire for enjoying fruits of action. For the embodied human being, it is impractical to abandon essential activities entirely. But if he renounces desire-driven actions and cravings, he is a true renunciant, a sannyasi. The three fold fruits of actions, good, bad, or mixed, accumulate karmas if the motive is rewards. No karmic reactions ensue when a true renunciate is selfless and bids his given duty to God. So now that's how much he has clarified uh, the tyagi and sannyasi, but they're all renunciants. Now he moves on to say the five causes of all actions or karmana. Oh, mighty armed one, learn from me about the five causes for the performance of all actions. Sankhya doctrine analyzes the causes of all work and explains how to halt karmic reactions. First three causes are the body, the doer, meaning the soul, and senses as the instruments. Fourth cause is the kind of effort made and the fifth being the grace of the divine providence. These are the five causal cogwheels of all proper or improper deeds that a man performs. These five factors orchestrate all actions done by the body, speech, and mind as per the norms. The ignorant have incomplete knowledge of causal factors as the intellect has not fully grown. So they are oblivious of the fifth factor, which is God's grace. They think the soul is the doer or on its own. So those with a purified intellect, on the other hand, have no ego of being the doers. They are only a witness of actions. 
even if they slay living beings, they are not the doers, hence not bound by any karmic reactions. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So okay? we have gone through this part, the first part, where very systematically Lord Krishna has given us uh, the science of action. Because we all do actions. Eh? Nobody can say that I'm not going to do action. We, as human beings, we have to do the action. So that's why he elaborated on it so much in detail, explained its limbs. He also explained the karmic reactions of the actions and also the process of becoming free from them and which is called a karma sannyas. So now let's look at verse number 18, if you can open your books. So let's look at the Sanskrit shlok first. Gyanam gyayam parigyata trividha karam cha udna karnam karam karta iti trividha karam sangraha. So in the first line, there are three words, technical terms. Gyanam, the knowledge. Gyayam, the knowable or the known or the object of knowledge. Gyayam. And parigyata means the knower. Knower. So knowledge refers to the knowledge obtained through the senses. Object of knowledge is that which is perceived by the senses and interpreted by the intellect. And knower is the jivatma. Okay. Three vidha, threefold. Karam cha udna. That's an impulse to action. The factors that induce the action. So these three are needed for any impulse of the action. And then karnam karam karta iti. Karnam is the instruments, the organs. Karam is the action. Karta is the agent, the doer. Iti means thus, three vidha, threefold. Karam sangraha, the constituents of action. That means the basis of the actions. So we need those three and these three also. So knowledge, the known and the knower form the threefold impulse to action. The organs, the action and the agent form the threefold basis of action. In the first line, the jnana, gay and parigyata, they are called the triad of knowledge. Gyan tripati. Triad of knowledge. And in the second line, karnam karam karta, they are the triad of action. Karam tripati. These are like a technical terms. Gyan tripati, karam tripati. So the impulse to action according to Lord Krishna is threefold. So these three are very important for any action. Without these three, no knowledge is ever possible. So it's like an interplay of these three. So the experiencer playing in the field of the experienced, what does it gain? It gains for himself the various experiences. And these are the one which are the constituents, the secret contents of the action. So that's why in order to do any action, we need the knowledge also. Without knowledge, if we do action, we fall flat on our face. So the impulse to action can spring either from the experience in the form of a desire or from the experienced in the form of temptation or from the experience in the form of similar memories of the past enjoyments. So beyond these three, there is no other impulse to action. Okay. So either our desire, we do desire prompted or we get tempted or we 
some old memories just to spring out. So that's why we do the action. So the impulse to action when it has arisen must also find a field to act in. And that is the basis of action, karam sangraha. So that's why in order to do the action, we must have the instruments to do the action. And there has to be the reaction and they've got to be agent also, which is the karta. So the sense of agency, normally it's expressed by the ego. Okay, so when a desirer, the agent encouraged by this constant attraction towards a satisfying end wants to achieve it, he must necessarily have the instruments of action. I mean, you can see that how beautifully he opened up. Normally, we just keep on doing the actions without thinking about what is it really taking? There's a lot happening in a very automatic mode. So agent having a desire, maintaining in his mind a clear picture of the end or the goal with all the necessary instruments to act would be the sum total, which we called Karam Sangrah. Okay, so Karam Sangrah and the Jnana Tripati. If any one of these three items is absent, action cannot be taken place. That means if the instruments are not there, if the karta is not there, or if the action is not there. So all three parts are equally important. And the quality of the action depends upon the quality of the jnana, jnaya, and parigyata. So having roughly indicating the threefold impulses of action, threefold basis for action, now Lord Kishan is going to go further in detail based upon the gunas, the sattvikta, rajsikta, tamsikta. You will see that. But remember these six parts. Three for the impulse to action, constituents of action. Yes, Jyoti. Um, Urmilji has a question. Yes, Urmilji. And after that, if you can give an example of this verse, that would be good. Okay. Uh, when uh, Pari uh, Geta is uh, the knower, uh -huh. he is also the, um, the in the uh, translation of the words, it says he's the knower. And um, what else did we say? Jivatma, yeah. uh, the doer. So the knower is the Jivatma is the doer. Doer, so the is, uh, is, the doer. doer is who is no. the doer? Oh, okay. Got it. The right. Doer the, doer. Is the agent. Exactly. Doer the is the doer agent. Is the Jivatma. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Three and, and three. An example of this is uh, anything which we will do. Anything. All our actions uh, have these uh, six to it. There's uh, no action without these three, these three and three. But remember, the knowledge has a deep correlation to the quality of action. Okay, but then we get to see that what is the knowledge, where the knowledge is coming from. Knowledge is very important. See, just like a degree from a top college carries weight in a job market. Or a SAT scores, ACT scores, Depend, de depending upon that, a student gets admission into the college. But who did it? That student did it or that person did it. Okay. So all of this uh, is interplaying all the time. Even when we clean the house, clean a bathroom, go into the kitchen, do something, or even to study something like this. Uh, all of this is uh, interplaying there. Yes, Jyoti. Sujata has a question. Yes, Sujata. 
Um, Harshi, um, I, I was listening to, you know, Urmil, Urmilji's poem, uh, you know, and I just wanted to clarify the door is, I mean, that's my understanding. The door is always the ego. The soul does nothing. Soul doesn't do anything. And uh, it's the Prakriti which is doing it. Yeah, so it's the ego, basically, in, in, in our case. So, so that's why we are calling it a, uh, it's just like a individualized soul. Individualized. That's what the ego is too. So, I mean, sometimes I think that, I know she didn't mean it to sound like soul, but I think that... Yeah, uh, that's what is written in the book. That's why I use that. It yeah. says in the, the soul. When see, you sometimes see the soul word is used for the Shuddha, Buddha, Atma also. Some places you will see that soul word is used for the Jeeva Atma also, which is individualized. And that's the ego. So you got to see in which context that soul word is used. Right. It confuses, but that's the yeah. way it was translated. Yeah. So I was yeah. also some other book. It was translated like that, Sujata. Yeah. That's what she's saying. No, no, I just want because people might just read the English book and say, "Oh, you know." See, that's why to dissect these in we have these glasses so that we have a more clarity about it, right? Right. That, that's what I was trying. So the karta is always the ego. I mean, whatever you call it, it's always. But Kriti is doing it. Yes. God, because normally we, in ordinary language, sometimes we say God does everything. Without God, even a leaf cannot move. But when we philosophic, philosophically look at it, no, God doesn't do anything. Prakriti is owned by God. The law of nature, all the laws are created by God. So in that sense, we can say that, yeah, God does everything. I mean, but the, God does not personally selectively does anything at all right yeah the same thing happens over here without soul we cannot even speak but soul itself does not speak through the instruments the actions are being done okay so it's like when we open it up it gets clear otherwise in a transactional language we use the word soul people even say that yoga is for body mind and soul Right? But when we philosophically look at it, soul doesn't need any yoga. Yeah, the soul doesn't need yoga. <laughs> yeah, soul doesn't need mind. Body needs yoga. Mind needs yoga. Intellect. We say it is for the body, mind, and soul. So some sometimes this word is used uh, for a little different purpose. Okay. So let's look at number nineteen. Gyanam karamcha karta chatridha ev gun bhedta prochate gun sankhyane. Yathavad, Shrinu, Tani, Api, Gyanam, Knowledge, Karam, Action, Karta, Actor. Three, Dha, of three kinds. Ev means only Gun, Bhedata, according to the distinction of temperaments. Okay, over here, Gun means temperaments. Prochyate, are declared. Gun, Sankhyane, in the science of the gunas or in the science of temperaments, yatha vat duly, shrinu here, tani them, api also. So Lord Krishna is saying knowledge, action, and actor are declared in the science of gunas to be of three kinds only. So, in other words, knowledge, which is jnana. Karam, which is action, and a karta, which is the actor, they all can be three kinds. According to the distinctions of gunas, then he says, hear them also duly. Duly means attentively. It's not that Arjun was not listening attentively, but just to emphasize that something he's going to tell, which is so deep and so important, pay attention to it. So, gunas, they are the preponderance of a given type of temperament in our inner nature. See, our mind and intellect functions constantly. But it always works under the climatic conditions within our mind. Our mind could be 
very calm her mind could be very agitated her mind could be very dull but we are still acting so those actions have those colors to it so the varying climates of the mind are called the three gunas okay satvik rajasik or tamasik good passionate or dull okay so there's always it's not just only three actually there are a lot of permutations and combinations of all of these so that's why there are so many different colors that's why we find very difficult to, to pinpoint the mood and the behaviors of ours also let alone the others at different periods of time because it always depend entirely upon the occasions the type of situations the nature of the problem the kind of the challenge a person is facing okay so then he mentions uh, the sankhya over here again this is the sankhya philosophy which explains all of this is in detail and last time i told you sankhya philosophy is a there's a yoga and sankhya it's one pair they go hand in hand yoga and sankhya so knowledge action and actor classified under sankhya philosophy sarav bhuteshu yen ekam bhavam avyam ikshate avibhaktam vibhakteshu tat gyanam vidhi satvikam sarav bhuteshu in all beings yen means by which ekam means one bhavam reality avyam indestructible ikshate sees like a one sees s e e s sees dekhna avibhaktam undivided vibhakteshu in the divided that means that gyanam means knowledge vidhi means no satvikam pure so this is a definition of a satvik gyan satvik knowledge that by which one sees the one indestructible reality in all beings undivided in the divided know that knowledge as satvik this is what geeta is teaching us move towards the satvik knowledge there is a same essence in all of them even though at the body level at the actions level at the moods level one person could be different at different times too but the other people also but there is a some same essence in all of us which does not change if we are moving towards that knowledge that's in satvik knowledge so the knowledge which can recognize and live constantly the truth is satvik even among the flux of the things to feel the harmony underlying the unity in diversity of forms and behaviors to live this awareness of the one life that pulsates in every heart that is the genuine achievement of the satvik knowledge sometimes we we talk that hey the same air we are all inhaling same air but over here lot question is even going beyond that the same life pulsates in everybody the same soul so these detailed descriptions of the different types of knowledge action actor why is he giving it to us this is not for the purpose of judging each other not the purpose of classifying each other that you you have a tamasic knowledge i have a satvik knowledge no 
this we have to understand it for our self we got to develop our self we got to move towards this higher goal where we see the sameness in everybody and this can happen only through satvik temperament so by self analysis we can diagnose our self so this is not to judge anybody else and we can immediately remedy the defects in us we got to remove the defects because as long as the defects are there we are not going to move to the higher realms so in this verse we have the description of a satvik type of knowledge the knowledge by which the one imperishable being is seen in all existence it's not only the human beings all existence even in the animal kingdom also in the plant kingdom also and any other kingdom also which we are not even familiar with right now the same life pulsates mm -hmm. so the satvik knowledge recognizes all of them as expressions of the one <clears throat> and the same truth which is the essence in all of them so that's why beautiful words he has used avibhakta vibhakteshu undivided in the divided so that means when we look at it physically in the manifested form it looks divided in my own body also there's a division my hands do something different than what my eyes do we can divide this into many many parts but there is a something in there which cannot be divided so that is the undivided in the seemingly divided when a knowledge takes us towards that that's a satvik knowledge one life throbs in all so the knowledge that can recognize the play of this one principle of consciousness in and through all the different equipments see just like a goldsmith will see the gold in all the ornaments which are made out of gold or an electrical engineer recognizes the same electricity flowing through all the bulbs same electricity instruments are different so many fested manifestation is different but the electricity is the same so the same thing we got if anybody who teaches us this that's a satvik knowledge okay so what is a rajasik knowledge so these three verses are 20 21 22 so this 21 verse that's a sat definition of a satvik knowledge verse number 21 is a definition of a rajasik knowledge पृथक्तवेन तु यत ज्ञानम नाना भावान पृथक विधान वेति सर्वेशो भूतेशो तत ज्ञानम विधि राजसम पृथक्तवेन एज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम वन अनदर तु मींस बट यत मींस व्हिच ज्ञानम मींस नॉलेज नाना भावान वेरियस एंटिटीज पृथक विधान ऑफ डिस्टिंक्ट काइंड वेति मींस नोस sarveshu in all bhuteshu in beings tat means that gyanam means knowledge vidhi no rajasam in terms of passion rajasikta but that knowledge which sees in all beings various entities of distinct kinds as different from one another known that know that knowledge as rajasik so in other words when knowledge unites it's a satvik when knowledge divides it's a rajasik because whenever we divide what happens i am better than you or i am worse than you it divides so when the world is not seen its connection with god is rajasik 
that's where the problems between the different races different genders creeds sects nationality that's where the problems mm -hmm. come we are different there's a peace when there's a satvik knowledge there's a agitation the restlessness where there is a rajasic knowledge so the knowledge that recognizes polarity by reason of separateness it's rajasic so always remember the rajasic knowledge will give us a restlessness it considers various entities are different from one another men are different than women will say then people start asking for their rights then there is a problem see the world is definitely there is a sort a sort assortment of innumerable types of different varieties this nana bhavan which he talked about various entities sure entities are various but the essence in all the entities is the same so satvikta is taking us towards the essence rajasikta is taking us towards the polarity or the different forms away from the essence so it divides us into different classes and that's where the agitation comes from the very core of the hindu culture is the recognition of the oneness of the entire living world of creatures that's where it came all those eating habits also breathing habits also living habits also recognizing that oneness showing the respect to all the creatures do not rob do not hurt okay and let's look at what is tamasikta then tamasik gyan yat to krit sanvat ekasmin karya saktam ahetukam तत्व अर्थवत अल्पम च तत तामसम उदाहृतम यत मीन्स दैट टू मीन्स बट कृत सनवत एज इफ इट वॉज दी होल लाइक ए कंप्लीट एकस्मिन वन सिंगल कार्य टू इफेक्ट सक्तम अटैच्ड अ है टू कम विदाउट रीजन अतत्व अर्थवत विदाउट फाउंडेशन इन ट्रूथ alpam narrow germins and that means that tamsam tamsik udaharitam declared but that knowledge which clings to one single effect as if it were the whole without reason without foundation in truth and narrow that is declared to be tamsik so when the intellect is dulled under the effect of tamas it clings to a fragmental concept as if it were the complete truth okay in hindi what we do we say thotha chana baje ghana i'm sure people who know hindi you know that so little knowledge you know only so much but you think now you know it all okay so their understanding is usually not even rational nor grounded in the scriptures or in reality yet they impose their beliefs on others they will speak louder they become irrational and that kind of intellect has got fumed 
under the dulling effects of extreme tamas. That's why he said that clings to one single effect as though it, if it were the whole. Never inquiring into the cause, a uh, had to come. Never took the intellect to that level to understand it deeply. Tamsik knowledge, normally you will see that people, when they become very fanatic in their faiths and in their devotion, in their views, in the values of life also, they think, no, our way is the only way. So they never inquire into and try to discover the cause of things and happenings. That's why he said unreasonable. So unreasonable knowledge is a tamasic knowledge. They like to project their own ideas upon the world and judge it all wrongly. In fact, a man of tamasic knowledge views the world as if it is meant for him and his pleasure alone. He totally ig ignores the divine presence or the infinite consciousness. So that's why the knowledge of the tamasic is said that by its own concept of self-importance, its vision becomes narrow, alpam, and limited. So instead of expanding the vision, it just becomes narrow. This is called a narrow-mindedness. To, to summarize these three verses, 2021 and 22, knowledge of the sattvic perceives the oneness underlying the universe, oneness. The comprehension of the Rajsik recognizes the polarity of the world, polarity. And the understanding of the Tamsik indicates a highly crystallized self-centered ego in that person. And the view of the world is always perverted and even false. Okay. And outside, what do we see? Tamsik intellect will give us restlessness and sorrow. So a person have, having a tamsic knowledge will be restless and sorrowful. The destiny of the Rajsik type is little better than that. But still there are agitations and despairs. And the higher type of intelligence, the sattvic type, we will see the life with extreme peace and harmony, joy and bliss. So if we want to have a joy and a bliss in our life, cultivate sattvic knowledge. That's what he's telling us. Yes, Jyoti. Mr. Jata. I, I, I just sort of thought that, you know, the Rajsik knowledge uh, saying the difference. I think the, the main problem with the Rajsik, uh, I mean, is, is the fact that you make a judgment that one thing is better than the other. I mean, when, I, I mean, God understands that there are differences, but he doesn't value one above the, he or she doesn't value one above the other. I mean, we know that our hands do one thing and our feet do something else. So, I mean, to say that the people who describe or appreciate difference uh, are, are Rajsik, I feel it's, it's, it's slightly incorrect. As long as they, they realize that they're, they're all connected, it, it, it's all right. And that means, that means they're recognizing Satvikta. Exactly. As long as you recognize the unity yeah. in all this diversity, it's all right. And that, and that is sattvic. Yeah. Okay. So it's not that we should not recognize the polarity, but what unites the polarity is that uh, unity. So once we are there, then we are sattvic. 
So that's why I said Satvik knowledge is the one which will give us extreme peace, harmony, joy, and bliss. It cannot come from a Rajasik knowledge, and it cannot definitely not come from Tamasik knowledge. Satvik knowledge gives us that. Okay, same energy is going towards my eyes also, towards my ears also, towards my feet also, and towards my head also. Same one, that oneness in this body which has multiple parts. Okay, yes, Jyoti. Um, Veronica. Um, yes, uh, regarding, um, I'm going back a little bit uh, when you said the soul. Is it one soul, like the Atman, one soul for everybody, or is there is it an individual soul for for each one? Okay, uh, Atma is not divided. Atman, it's only one. How does it get divided? Through the ego. Otherwise, Atma is one. You will see that when we start this Bhagavad Gita again, you will see in the previous chapters, Lord Krishna mentions, a yogi sees the same in a cow also, in a dog also, in a learned person also, in everybody else also. So that means it's one. So a yogi, a rishi sees one Atma everywhere. Undivided, homogenous, same, everywhere. It's only one. Yes. It's you know, the closest of this is a mother feels with the children. Don't we feel oneness? Rishis, yogis, and the mother. They have that... Whether they can verbalize it or not, we do not see the separateness from us and our children. It's the same. That's why a child could be thousands of miles away. Mother knows what's happening. If, if the mother is in tune with the, this inner part of it. So, so soul and Atman is the same? Soul and Atma is the same. Spirit is the same. It's the same. It's a different language, different way, but it's a soul. And God is what? God is that too. That's why we say God is everywhere. And God is only one. Okay? Yes. It's, it's in my life, I was taught, and that's why it comes back always, that God and soul are two different things. They're not. They are, They're not. No. No, God and soul are not two different things. In magnitude they are, but in essence they are not. Okay. It's almost like a, a water in the ocean. I just fill up a bottle with the ocean water and bring it home. The chemistry of that water in the bottle is the same as the ocean. Magnitude is different because it got separated from it. And it's our, uh, we think we got separated. Actually, we are not separated. So water definitely got separated, but Atma can never get separated from God. Our ego thinks it's separated. Not only from God, Ego makes us think that we are separated from other human beings too. And that's what the Rajsikta is. That's a Rajsik knowledge. So Sattvic knowledge unites us. The Rajsik knowledge divides us. And Tamsik knowledge <laughs> destroys us. And when we are destroyed, we destroy others too. The clear example is what did we see Wednesday in Washington, D.C.? We don't have to go far. 
Dance acknowledge. It happened there, it happens in the homes, it happens in the corporate world, it happens in the churches and the temples also, only because of the tamasic knowledge. The place is a sattvic, but people bring the tamasic and the rajic knowledge is there and destroy the peace and harmony. Okay, so we'll see that next week. He is going to tell us a sattvic action, rajic action, tamasic action. Because you remember in that verse, he told us three parts are needed for the action and three parts are needed for the knowledge. It's like a combination and the permutation of all this. That's why we see what we do and we don't even know where, the, where is it happening. But when we have a clarity of it, we'll have a more control over it. Knowledge is very powerful, especially when the knowledge, we apply it in our life. So pay attention, what you are studying, what you are watching, the people you are mingling with, what kind of a knowledge you are getting this week? Just pay attention. Because we are absorbing the knowledge constantly. Through our eyes also we are absorbing the knowledge. Through our ears what we hear, we are absorbing the knowledge. We got to have some filters inside us. Throw out the tamasic knowledge, which is unreasonable, which is a narrow-minded. Absorb only the sattvic knowledge. And it's not that with the sattvic knowledge, we won't be able to live in this plural world. We will live in this, but peacefully. We will recognize the substratum, which is the same in all of us. This is our homework. This is what we need to do. Okay, so uh, any question uh, before I think today, Manny is going to sing a bhajan um, for us. Uh, Harshi, we have a change of plans in that Dali is going to sing. Oh, Dali is going to sing. Uh, uh, Manny is okay with that? Yeah. Manny, you are... Because, because he... he uh, Manny, unmute yourself. It's okay for something special have with, with Dali today. I let her have it. But otherwise, for... Dali, you can sing next week. Okay? Because Manny was planning a, a bhajan today. Okay? Yeah. Is that okay, Dali? Is that okay, Dali? I didn't hear from you. Yeah, go ahead. You can sing today. Yeah, yeah. He was planning today, so I let him sing, and then next week you can sing. That's okay. okay. We are not going anywhere. No, we are not going anywhere. <laughs> okay. So before he sings, let me do the Shanti part, and then many can sing. And if anybody has a question after that, also we can continue discussing. Okay. Om Purnamada Purnamidam. Purnat Purnamudachate, Purna Se Purnamadai, Purna Meva Visheshate, Om Shanti 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 Mujetun Data Bohut Kuchidia He Tera Shukriya He Tera Shukriya He Mujetun Bhagavan